everyone, it's Eliana and I have a card to share with you today. I originally made this card as a Mother's Day card, but uh, as you can see, you can change the sentiment and it could be any kind of a card. I am starting off with some glossy paper and I sprayed it with some alcohol um, before I added my alcohol ink. Uh, I didn't think that it moved very well, so I ended up using the blending solution and that makes the alcohol ink um, move a little bit better. So the colors that I'm using are Flamingo Watermelon Sandal um, and later on you'll see me use the color Meadow. Um, I really have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to alcohol inks, so I'm just kind of just playing around and I just keep messing around with it until I get something that I really like. What I did learn is after a while, because I made multiples of these, I learned that um, air works better than tilting the paper. So um, have a bottle of air or a straw and you can blow onto your paper to get it to move. Now that my piece is dry, I'm going to go ahead and stamp on it. I am putting it into the corner of the Misty. Just keep in mind that your photopolymer stamp will pick up some of that if it's new. And um, But I'm going to be stamping over it so you're not going to see where it pulled up. I did use my anti-static bag uh, because the um, embossing powder will stick to the glossy paper. I'm using my Versifying Claire ink to stamp on my um, glossy paper. It is slick, but since I'm, pa I'm planning on embossing, it should take care of that wet ink. I've added some Brutus Monroe Icicle embossing powder and, I, and now I'm just heat setting it with my heat gun. You want to make sure your gun is nice and hot because you don't want to scorch your glossy paper. Once that's done, I want to go in and I want to add a little bit of yellow to the middle of the flower. So I've just used this little ceramic dish to add some of the um, sandal or I don't know what color it is. It's just a yellow alcohol ink just to see if I can get it to look a little bit more yellow in the middle. And I'm just dropping the uh, alcohol ink in with a small brush. It's kind of a uh, stiff brush so it kind of really helps. And now for the stem I'm just adding some green down to the bottom. And if you work quickly your alcohol ink won't dry in the dish and to clean up your dish you can just put a little bit of alcohol in there. Um, just some rubbing alcohol um, or whatever kind of alcohol you have and it'll clean right up. Once that's all done I'm going to fussy cut it and I've already done that and I'm just taking a black marker and I'm going around the edges. Um, you might not want to use a Copic marker because it is rough on the nib but it's the one that I just happen to be pick, to pick up. Now this I learned from my second card. I have used some snow cone cardstock. It's from My Favorite Things and I'm inking up my stamp where I want my image to be on my card with the same ink color. So I use Snow Cone ink. Um, now I'm taking my Picket Fence blender brushes and I am adding some um, Distress Oxide ink. I want the flower to look like there's a glow behind it and so I'm adding just on the edges um, that way I'm not having to guess where I need to ink my cardstock and I don't need to do the whole thing because I just want it to look like a halo around my flower. And you won't be able to see the ink underneath because the uh, Distress Oxide uh, is a little bit darker than the Snow Cone ink. And the Distress Oxide colors that I use are Broken China and Tumbled Glass. And so I'm just adding it. I'm not even bothering to pounce my brush uh, because I, I'm starting in the middle. And with the lighter ink here, I'm just blending it out just so that it looks like a glow. The 
the mess in the middle will be covered up by the flower so you don't need to worry about that. So once that's done you can see where the flower is going to go and um, I don't want to have to worry about adding a ton of tape to the back or foam tape to the back of my flower my peony and so I have a piece of craft foam and I've just put it inside my misty and I'm just inking that up with some black ink and I'm going to place some stick it adhesive right over that flower and the reason why I stamped it was because I didn't want to use a whole sheet of stick it and so this way I could see where my flower is going to be. I'm going to trim off the this half of the stick it and then I'm going to um, use that second half on the back side. So I'm just going to pull off the um, edges. I like to do just one part of the stick it that way I don't mess up when I lay it down. So if I just get that center stripe, it makes it easier to not get wrinkles in the rest of the stick it. So I'm going to add the rest of the stick it to the back side. So once that's done, I'm going to pop this back into my misty. I'm going to make sure that I am getting the flower on the whole thing. I'm going to add my black ink. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to know where to trim. So I'm going to be trimming the um, flower out. I'm going inside of the line because I don't want to have to worry about matching up the foam to the um, peony that I fussy cut. I'm using these tonic uh, scissors and they have the um, Teflon coating I think that makes them non-stick. So I, I'm just messily cutting around. I'm not being precise or anything. I just need to be inside of the line so that when I put my foam on the uh, back of the flower, um, it's a lot easier than having to put all these little pieces of foam. I wanted to do this because the glossy paper is rather thin and with it being popped up, I didn't want it to um, get mushed in the mail. So I'm just removing the backing um, off the flower. I'm sorry, the backing off the foam so that I'm able to stick my flower on there. Now for my sentiment, I am using this Concord and Ninth Dahlia stamp set. It is the amazing um, sentiment from there. Um, I was kind of in a hurry. I was excited about getting the card done because it turned out so well and I didn't check to see if I was in frame so you'll see me zoom, zoom out in just a little bit. So now I want to stamp my sentiment. I am using my Nocturne ink and you just want to make sure that you pick the right corner because I almost messed up there. So I am tucked into the upper corner and I'm just making sure that um, this is going to stamp where I want it on my card. I'm checking the positioning. Uh, once again, I'm out of frame. Sorry about that. But once I'm absolutely sure where it's going to go, I'm, I'm going to add my magnets just so that it doesn't move just in case. And I'm going to ink it up a second time. Now I can add my embossing powder and emboss part of my sentiment. The reason why I didn't add the second part of the sentiment now is because I couldn't get the second part, um, the UR part, close enough with the amazing stamp. So I had to do it in two stages. So I wanted to make sure that the UR was tucked in by with that M from the amazing so I can get it nice and close and I went ahead and heat set that. Now I've assembled my card and now I am adding some of the Studio Cadia Clear Drops 2. Um, these are very similar to the Paper Tray Ink Raindrops. Um, 
but they have a few different sizes than the raindrops have. This one has a little bit of a bigger drop, so I wanted the bigger drop uh, because the flower was so large. I did spray all of my cards with the Sheer Shimmer Spray. Um, because these cards are rather large, I did um, the little post-it notes that we have, the, um, what are they called? Double dip notes. <laughs> Sorry, it's my own product and I couldn't remember the name. The double dip notes are small. I just went ahead and just put it in the middle. And as you can see, each card is just a little bit different than the next. You never know what you're going to get with the alcohol inks. And so you can play around with the different shades. Um, and so here they are. These cards are not the standard card, so I did have to make my own envelope. I did use the Fiskars envelope, envelope maker. Um, they do, this is the first time I've ever used it, so I am measuring my card so that I can follow the instructions. So um, in this video, this is the first time that I'm using it. So I'm writing down the measurements to my card um, because I can't seem to remember anything anymore. Now I'm looking at the template and it's telling me that I need to cut my paper down. Um, I don't remember what color, what number it is and I can't read it on the screen right now. So you'll have to read the post-it note. So I did trim down my um, cardstock and now you do have to use two measurements. You have an A and a B measurement. And so I'm just writing down what the different measurements are. That way I don't confuse myself. So I'm moving the one panel over for the A measurement and you just butt it up into the corner and then you use your um, bone folder. Um, they do have an embossing tool in the back, but I like my bone folder better. And you do the opposite side. Now I'm moving the uh, marker down to the B and then you flip it over to the opposite side and you do the same score line. It is really easy. Um, the only thing I wish was that the measurement would be on the unit itself. Then you don't have to worry about losing that piece of paper. So the little punch tool that's in it, you can pull it off the back and then you can punch out the notches to your card stock. So you're just gonna line up that little V and then press it down. I've done all the sides here. Now I'm just going to go and round the corners. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and fold the edges and then just add a little bit of tape to um, close my envelope. I am adding the tape to the smaller flap so I don't have to worry about if I am overlapping on the large flap. So I'm doing it on this side. I'm going to use my pick to remove the backer and then my um, envelope is done. Uh, I did add a little bit of tape to the top so that I could seal it. Um, that way it's ready to go when I'm all done. Thanks so much for sticking with me to with this video and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Have a great day.